First thing, we go to the IoT Portal app and we find our hope, which is here, IoT Portal hope, that's the one in this office. Click on discover, because we're adding a new device to it. So we'll click on discover, goes green, starts counting down. Hold the switch on this unit for about six seconds. Let me see, it's about six. Oh, it starts flashing, so we know it's done. Let me just wait now for it to be discovered. That was it. It's been discovered, it should be down the bottom now. There it is, the default name for that is actually circuit breaker. Not really circuit breakers, these. The more high current switches with a software circuit breaker in them. So if you're gonna use them as a circuit breaker, put another circuit breaker in line of a higher current than you're gonna set it to. If you wanna turn the circuit on, we can simply just hit the button on the app. There it is. Or we could actually operate it via the switch on the unit. It, it'll show you on the, the app whether it's been on or off, whether it's on or off. So I'll um, turn it back on. Now to get an idea of how much current we're using for the heater and the Hoover, I'll turn the heater on. I'll just open the uh, power model. Should give us an updated, that's it, updated power. So it's using about three and a half amps, the heater. I'll turn that one off. Um, I'm gonna turn the Hoover on now, so you might not hear me. And we can see the Hoover used at just over five amps. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the breaker current to six amps, so it trips when they're both on, but either one on, a, on its own will, uh, will not trip the breaker. Now I should get a call, an SMS, and an email when the breaker trips, and it should trip if they're both on because I've set the breaker current to six amps. So let's turn the first one on. So that is using about, about three and a half amps that's using, that's just the heater. If we turn this on, it should trip. Thank God for that. And because the breaker's tripped, I should get a phone call and a text message and an email from the port, the hub to tell me that it's tripped. Oh, for a minute, it was broken. So I just uh, took it off to swap it with another one. It's not broken, it's fine. It's uh, the problem I warned you about at the beginning and that you should put a fuse or a circuit breaker in line with it. And I'd blown the fuse and plug that I was feeding it off. We had eight amps going through it, don't forget. And that is just a Broken five amp fuse, 10 amps. That should do is actually just set it to two amps now, so it'll trip with just the heater because it's a bit noisy. The other thing, Let's turn that on. Well, put the heater on, should break any second. There we go, it's gone off. And there's the email. Got the emails, didn't really understand why I wasn't getting the text messages. I managed to run out of credit. You can change the message, by the way, if you wanted to say something else when it's uh, over current, you can change that. Same with over voltage or under voltage. I'm gonna leave it as it is. Set it to two amps, heat will trip it. Let's try that again. So this time I'm gonna put the circuit breaker back on or the high current switch as I'd rather call it. There we go, there's the SMS. There's the call. I'm gonna answer the call, see what it says. I'm going to set the over voltage to 220. So I, it says about two, two, 200 on the, uh, the triac unit. So I'm going to set it to 220. Okay, that's set now. Now, if I increase the voltage on this thing, it won't trip out because the current, it'll trip out because of voltage. I should say, if you increase the voltage, there we go, it's tripped out. So we get a different message this time. There we go, switch trip over voltage. And we replay the message. Over voltage. Switch tripped over voltage. Now obviously these are somewhat safety critical. So you want to have a little look inside it, or at least you probably want to know what's inside it. Maybe you want don't want to destroy your own. So I've destroyed this one. Um this is a six amp one, but actually they're just the same inside. What is good about this, it's got that big 60 amp relay. So I wouldn't go setting it to 63 amps and assuming it's gonna be able to cope with that, but it's got a nice big um, solid piece of copper wire there going to the terminals between the relay. And what's good about it, it's not actually, um, it's not soldered, it's welded, which is pretty good. Uh, likewise, that's welded on the other contact too. And these wires that go off to sense the current and power this little board, they're welded as well. So they're not going to come off. And um, there's the neutral. So you don't really want to be putting 60 odd amps or any high current 40 amps through that really because you kind of want to bypass that but you need it to power it this is also why 
you can't really use it just as a circuit breaker. You need a circuit breaker in addition to this. So you'd want a circuit breaker in series and you want the current set on that to be less, sorry, higher than this. So you want this to be set lower than your circuit breaker. So it's this that goes, so you get notified. But because this got a neutral inside it, you can't really have, this is your only circuit breaker for starters because you need some protection in case of short circuits in here. Similarly, this wire, I know it's nicely welded on there. I did say it's welded on. It's, see, it's not soldered, it is welded, which is pretty good. But then, these are pretty close together, these terminals. I know that's okay for industrial. Uh, these are considered industrial equipments. That kind of diff, um, one's called clearance, isn't it? One's called clearance, one's called creepage, whichever way around it is, can never remember. But, you know, ideally, they'd be much further apart, those poles, and there'd be a slot in it. Um, so if it was like a, a consumer piece of consumer, consumer gear for within a house, doesn't matter if it's a diffuse box, but if it was in a house, that's what you'd want to see. So it's not perfect, but actually there's nothing electrically dangerous about that. Obviously the rest of this is just a bit of a power supply and some microcontroller and uh, that, that's the module that connects to the Wi-Fi. Well, in our case, Zigbee, we don't use Wi-Fi ones, we only use the Zigbee ones, which is secure. Um, so they're perfectly safe. I think electrically, there are some things that would, would be better, but actually I don't think there's anything really wrong with them. I wouldn't like, I really wouldn't sell them if I thought they were dangerous. Um, and that's why I cracked one open to have a look inside to check that, you know, there's nothing particularly terrible about it. Um, but obviously, yeah, you'd want to use either a fuse like we did or a circuit breaker in series with it. So it's, you know, you've got some protection over this unit. You obviously can't use that as a circuit breaker on its own.